Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. Today's our first day on the job site. Right now I'm just going to break it up with a mini skid stair and a breaker attachment. This concrete uh, is in pretty bad shape. It's got a lot of cracks in it. But the main purpose of redoing this whole thing is because they're getting an RV and they needed a wider driveway. That way they could have their travel trailer on the driveway and still get in and out of the garage. So we're going to go all the way to that block wall. And then we're going to widen it the other way as well. The driveway came out really thin. Um, from the looks of it, they used a, a big rock mix. That's the three quarter inch minus or one inch minus possibly. So they either wheelbarrowed this or tailgated it back in the, I don't, this looks probably was done in the 70s. It's pretty old. Not a lot of control joints, no wire mesh or reinforcement. You can see all the patching they've done on the cracks throughout the years. And that never looks good when you try to patch cracks. It usually looks better just to leave the cracks natural. So when we put the new driveway in, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make it a, a solid 4 inches thick. The old one was only about 3 inches. We'll go 4 inches thick. We're going to go with a 3500 PSI fiber mesh additive I'll add on the job site. Also, I'm going to be using um, my new reinforcement rods, which is 100% fiberglass. So there'll be no steel whatsoever in the concrete. So we never have to worry about rusting. Because you know what happens to concrete when steel rusts inside it. This, the concrete actually blows off of the top of the, uh, re the steel because the steel rusts and expands. The concrete fails. So with this fiberglass reinforcement, we just took another equation out of a possible failure. Really good wet weather along the um, oceans where there's a lot of salt. It's not going to uh, corrode. And you'll, we're going to show that as well. The fiberglass reinforcement on 20 inch centers. That's my brother right there, Douglas O'Dell. He brought his trailer in. He's got a little higher capacity dump trailer there. His is a uh, 14,000. It'll do. Mine's a 10,000. And right now I got to get shackles put in and a bunch of other stuff because it's been taking a beating for the last eight years. So I've got to do a little maintenance on that unit. You can see that concrete's three inches thick and it's coming out in big slabs and it's staying together. So concrete alone does pretty well without any reinforcement. I mean, you could do a 10 by 10 without any reinforcement and you'd be fine. You could sling it around with my tractor, a 10 by 10, and it's not going to really break unless you drop it on the ground. What I like about reinforcement in a big concrete area, because we know that concrete's going to crack probably in about 10 by 10 or less sections. That's real typical on a 4 inch slab. But what the reinforcement can do is where it does crack, it's going to hold those areas together so they don't start shifting up and down and spreading apart and just, uh, you know, making a trip hazard, an eyesore. This ground is really, really nice ground for concrete. It's, it's just pure sand. Sand's an excellent base because you get 100% compaction out of it just by the fact that the way it settles into itself. There's no air voids. Now here's that fiberglass rod. This is a 3 8 inch diameter. I happen to get this from Owens Corning. They make a lot of different variety of things. I especially remember them from uh, the nonstick frying pans and different cookware things. Now it's very, you can't really bend this on the job site. It has to be manufactured bent. You can't just heat it up and bend it because you leave, lose a lot of tensile strength if you do that. So it has to be made with 90 degrees uh, bends in it if you need bends. 
but all my stuff is pretty straight straightforward as well we have a footing on the block wall that's rather high which I run into that a lot and it's really frustrating because I have to figure out how to hide that footing without knocking it out and disturbing the wall so I usually have to come up high on the wall cover the footing slope it away from the wall you know lots of little tricks here's the expansion foam I put that at the city sidewalk because you know that city sidewalk is going to be coming out before this driveway ever does and that gives me some movement and they don't they won't know my driveway won't get disturbed that way then I got it over here on the garage floor as well and around that little pop out gives it some space for movement some little handy dandy uh, tying in there and some odds and ends now there was a brick ribbon there and some gravel we just made it an easy access and just went all the way across the concrete we've got the reusable plastic form on that radius down there in the bottom I've got my oiled up 2x4s at the top and we just sprayed them this morning because it is poor day now this is our third day on the job site first day demo second day setup and tie bar grade compact third day we're going to be uh, putting the concrete down and we're using CMEX the fifth, fifth largest producer of cement in the world and here's the fiber mesh which I happen to have in stock on my website for sale at about three dollars a pound uh, plus shipping of course that's kind of a bummer we're putting this down at about a five inch slump here so it's pretty dry and the scales between 1 and 12 anything over a six inch slump is pretty much throwaway <laughs> and the nice thing about um, that the fiberglass rebar very lightweight I can carry 50 pieces single-handedly we got the four foot wood bowl float and right here is a 12 foot 2 by 4 aluminum screed we have a slight swell coming out of the driveway from the left to the right and pushing out because the entrance to the garage is level and we're trying to get the water to run to the street we have to kind of do a little bit of a swell there it's not real visible the only time you can see it is when water's running down it which is really what you want if it's visible you're gonna feel it when you walk over it really great day for pouring concrete it's about 70 to 70 degrees we got overcast ideal conditions even a chance of uh, rain in the following day so it's gonna get water cured naturally so far we've just got it bowl floated we still have to go over this a few more times as the bleed water comes out we'll work we'll work it with a, a, a Fresno this is a five foot Fresno right here after this we may ever even go out and hit it with a funny trowel now I'm going out here right now on my sliders just to check slopes now we're all three out here we have Juan, Miguel and myself going down the sliders we can all grab about it we can wipe out about a six foot wide area so we can cover about 18 feet side by side all the way down uh, 
I've noticed most people use the uh, metal sliders, but I really prefer the fiberglass. As you can see, that's what I always use. They're a little bit wider, a little more sticky, so when you're coming down a hill, you don't um, slide down it out of control. And they also double as a nice snowshoe if you ever run into that situation where um, you end up in the snow, you have, you're in your work truck, and all you have is your sliders with you. Or maybe even a toboggan. Here's the beautiful 50% nylon, 50% horsehair broom. Working a little magic. This is your final touch here. We've already hand troweled it out twice. And I'm basically dry broom in this. Very little water on the broom itself. Okay, here's your um, third day after the pour. Because of the weather conditions, we had a way to extra day to saw cut. Otherwise, we might have got a little spalling on the cuts. It would have been too fresh. So we waited an extra day. Now we're going to cut this up. and We're just going to do a basic cut pattern at about 10 foot sections. The way we've laid these lines out, which is crucial, is off of the um, crack points. And the crack points are off of corners that protrude into the concrete. So you gotta cover those first, and then you lay, off af lay out everything off of those. Like this particular first cut I'm making, and the reason I made it the first cut is because I know it might crack there. And I've had cases where I'm on a job cutting and I don't even get through the entire cut and you can feel the concrete snap below your feet and you can almost hear it pop. So I always start with the cracks I think are more, most crucial to try to keep ahead of it. And I'm running the Medusa made by Skill. Also I have the cordless vacuum from DeWalt which I just put on a little furniture dolly and it just rolls around wherever I go. And you can see that vacuum works really nice when paired with that tool. It's not very much dust left to deal with. So I don't have to go around sweeping it up, uh, scooping it up, bagging it. It's pretty much gone in the vacuum. And you know if you leave that on the ground and you wash it down it creates a really big slurry trail down the gutter so it's best if you can run a vac with your equipment or you have a lot of dirt area to wash it into in this case we don't now i always use the uh, pressure washer when i clean up the jobs one reason is um you don't use a lot of water, so you don't, you're not wasting water. You're not flooding the street. Uh, you minimize your water usage and you get uh, good results quickly. Here it is, a beautiful driveway, sweet and simple. Gets the job done. All the water runs out. And now you can fit a nice travel trailer in there and a couple cars and um, everyone's happy. Here's a nice aerial view with the drone. Now as we pan around here you'll be able to you might even catch a glimpse of the ocean as well as uh, Miles Square Park. 
because this particular location is in Fountain Valley. There's the ocean looking that way. You can see a couple of um, towers out there. And there's Mile Square Park. It has tennis, has a couple ponds in there. It has archery. Here's a strawberry field. One of the last sole surviving strawberry fields around. Anyway, thank you for watching the videos. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a good day.